We have come to the issue of Nintendo Power, where the Virtual Boy has come out with issue number 75. We're going to be talking about coverage of that system this issue, though so not so much reviewing the games. The Virtual Boy is the cover story of this issue, and like the Virtual Boy, the cover is a goddamn mess, with lots of red and black, with semi-simulated wireframes that makes it hard to look at. The letters column is a whole bunch of emails that Nintendo Power has received because they have an internet presence now. Yay! Early interwebs. In the top 20, we've had a big shakeup on the Super Nintendo rankings. Mortal Kombat 2, Earthbound, and NBA Live 95 are returning to the charts, while Donkey Kong Country 2, Doom, Chrono Trigger, and Ogre Battle are new to the charts. The Hall of Fame inductees for this issue have a bunch of new sports games for the NES. Well, new, old new sports games. New old sports games? Whatever. The Virtual Boy is coming out this month, so Nintendo is getting into the launch lineup, including notes on a few titles that didn't get a US release with details on four of the overall launch lineup. I'm not really going to review any of these since I'm not really able to properly talk about them. All the games I've reviewed thus far, I have been able to experience even through an emulator in an approximation of their, like, close approximation to their actual experience in terms of its their images displayed on a screen. That's something you can relatively accurately emulate. The Virtual Boy, to do that, would require something like a VR setup or that sort of thing, and I don't have that. So I can't... I don't feel I can adequately review these titles. But what I can do is I was that when this came out, I'm this is probably the first console I was really old enough to remember the launch of and be paying attention to. Not because I was actually following game news at the time, but because I have a family member, my mom, who was working at Toys R Us. And so I can talk about that. So the thing I remember the most about the Virtual Boy and it being carried at Toys R Us was it was never featured that prominently. Saturn, PlayStation, and 64 later on all had fairly visible demo kiosks that were facing the main body of the store. While the Virtual Boy was kind of off and out of the way. Uh, like on the like in the middle of an aisle or on the end cap towards a wall as opposed to towards the main body of the store. The kiosk also didn't have a time limit for demos, as opposed to the N64 demo units, where those, like, you'd get, like, I want to say six to seven minutes to play GoldenEye or Mario 64 or that sort of thing. Whereas, basically, just the Virtual Boy demo kiosk, kiosk just kept running. Um, wasn't even a limited build, either, like, with the well, PS4. One in Saturn, where it just a demo disc in there. Um, that said, there wasn't that much of a line to try the game, at least not after a while. I remember early on, there was like a bit of a line, like both adults and like not a lot of kids. I was like, remember myself being like one of the few kids I remember seeing wanting to play the Virtual Boy. Um, that said, the system didn't like the eye strain for the system certainly was basically its own time limit. Um, I would spend a moderate amount of time at Toys R Us because, again, my mom worked when I went because my mom worked there, and I was either she was either going to be giving me a ride home or, or take me home, or I'd come in because with her because she had to do paperwork, pick up a paycheck or something, and so I'd be there for a while, and thus I'd have a chance to like play on the system for a significant period of time, and. Like, eventually he hit the point with the ice chain, I was like, nope, I'm done. You did, you just couldn't play any further. And that definitely, and that definitely created its own time limit there, because, like, once you hit the ice train limit, like, I'm out, I can't play this anymore, I'm going to go to the PS, at this point it'd be the PS1 kiosk, or the um, Saturn kiosk, because, like, yeah, there's the demos disc on there, and it's still a limited slice of these games, and they're limited in duration. But in the way they let you rest your eyes more. Or that sort of thing. The first game we have this issue is Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. I had actually forgotten this game would come out this late in the Super Nintendo's life cycle. I've been kept expecting it for the past few issues. 
to just it to come up. The article focuses entirely on general gameplay and mechanics with more specifics on levels promised in a later issue. So, like with Chrono Trigger before now, I'm going to hold off on this one for a little bit until we get some level maps. Next up is a Game Boy port of a Super Nintendo game with Street Fighter 2. This appears to be a pretty straightforward port of Championship Edition, except where Vega slash Claw isn't a playable character. Street Fighter 2 GB, for lack of a better term, is a pretty decent port of Champion Edition. The two button controls actually work moderately well here. Uh, one for kicks and one for punches, so I wasn't really able to get a grasp on how they intended to handle switching between light, medium, and heavy attacks. That said, the problem with this game on the system being a part of Champion Edition is, the Champion Edition, part of its thing is, is for lack to borrow a term from Mortal Kombat, mirror matches, fighting other versions of the game, same character. And the problem being the Game Boy doesn't have a variable color palette, so you can't have characters be different colors. Now, the, the Shoto clones, Ryu and Ken, they work here because they have, not just because they have different stage backgrounds for their when you fight them, but also because there's some tweaks, their difference in character design. For example, Ken has shorter, Ken has longer hair than Ryu does. But if you come to Ryu versus Ryu, it's two versions of the exact same sprite. So it's hard, it can cause a little bit of a mix-up during play. Now, presumably, if you played this on a Super Game Boy, that might fix the problem, but your mileage may vary, and not everyone's got access to one of those. A while back, Nintendo Power gave a, did a feature article on various schools where you can go to learn game development, and one of them was DigiPen. This issue, we have an article with a bit more focus on the school. Our next game is Phantom 2060 for the Super Nintendo, based on the animated U.S. French co-production, with character designs by Peter Chung, whose series Aeon Flux, which is, he's more famous for, wrapping up the same year this issue is coming out. There are maps of most of the game, along with some gameplay notes. Phantom 2040, sorry, I got the year wrong earlier, is an okay licensed platformer. It's more responsive with better mobility options than Judge Dredd, and does a lot more with the narrative as well in terms of its presentation. It has cutscenes, big dialogue sequences. It reminds me a lot more in terms of how it's presented narrative with, well, the NES Ninja Gaiden games. And it's let has more world exploration options to it than um, other similar action platformers do. Complete with you, instead of having it, like, picking a series of levels or anything like that, like using the Mega Man style level selection option, instead you have a, a world map and you can select different places to go to based on the plot. And as the narrative progresses for each chapter of the game, more places in the world map become available. That said, the game does somewhat expect you to understand something about the source material in order to become more emotionally invested in who these characters are, what their personalities are, that sort of thing. And, well, because this series wasn't that available, like, like cable only and only on certain channels, I never really got a chance to watch it, so I don't have that familiarity, which is kind of a bummer. Now, I do plan on rectifying that at some point in the future, but that said, if you don't know anything already about the Phantom, and Phantom 2040 in particular, I don't know if this will change your mind. Coverage of Chrono Trigger continues, and this time we get some dungeons and area match with maps, which is enough for me to make me feel like it's time to review the game. So, this game is a big part of my earlier years of gaming, and thus, to paraphrase Eric, my logic is uncertain where Chrono Trigger is concerned. That said, this game is something of a landmark title when it comes to RPGs in general, not just JRPGs. Ultima 4 had come out before this, with its efforts at implementing consequences for your actions in terms of gameplay, but there wasn't necessarily a sense of transparent, subtle, meaningful choice. By explanation, when you think meaningful choice in a game, then it's something that's done in a menu as a result of a prompt whether it's resolving a puzzle or giving a response to a dialogue option. To put it another way, it is a reactive 
action. The game asks you, what do you do? And then you respond. Even today, this is the case with RPGs like Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Fallout, and even The Witcher. To be clear, this isn't a bad thing. It fits nicely with how programming works. However, it makes the feats that Chrono Trigger, Trigger does with how it implements choice all the more impressive. There are multiple occasions where you're making decisions that impact later events from like a dialogue standpoint and a narrative standpoint, which are invisible to the player, to the point that you don't know you made that choice until it comes up later in the game. And it even tutorializes this earlier with the sequence with the Millennial Fair and how that feeds into the trial. And on top of all of that, the multiple endings can't really be underestimated. Chrono Trigger only really has one ending, you become the Avatar, or you don't. High Left Other Cities generally doesn't come up as much in other games, and the original Fallout, which in the ending gives you slides describing what the fates were of each city that you went through and whose quest lines you performed, that doesn't come up until, well, another couple years by the time this issue Nintendo Power is out. Chrono Trigger, on the other hand, has multiple different endings, which can actually vary dramatically depending on how the game played out, up to including things related to whether or not you choose not to resurrect Chrono, and thus not have him for the game's conclusion. That is nothing to sneeze at. Thus, in short, I would argue that Chrono Trigger is one of the best RPGs, console or, or PC, JRPG or Western, of all time, and it still holds up. Moving from one of the classic RPGs of the Super Nintendo, and again, of all time, to one that is considerably less so, we have Secret of the Stars from Tecmo, which has a visual style that reminds me more of Final Fantasy IV than of VI, and considering that it came out in Japan in 1993, I'm not too surprised by that. It does have the conceit of splitting through a couple parties, which is neat. Secret of the Stars is mechanically a very basic game. It doesn't have the puzzle dungeon-based design of something like Lufia. It doesn't have the graphical complexity of a Final Fantasy VI. And it doesn't quite have the... Yeah, it's probably closer gameplay mechanic-wise to like the Dragon Quest series. And that's it. It's fine. It's, again, Dragon Quest level complexity with a little more narrative involvement. That's okay. A used copy will put you out a little cash with a loose English copy running you about 40 bucks, and a Japanese copy, which you could hack a translation based off the English ROM off, um, off of to run it on a Retron or something, will run you about 12. That said, uh, there's a significant minus for this game of the translation. It's it's rough. I've, even very early on, encountered more than a few glaring spelling errors. Enough that I am sincerely surprised that some fan translation group hasn't just gone and said, this game's translation needs another pass, and just gone through and just redone it. We have a bunch of useful tips for Ogre Battle, like having a designated unit for taking cities, then using your tougher but less beloved units to handle occupation and protection of those cities, along with making sure not to let your cities be retaken, and notes on changing unit types with special items. In classified information, we have a code from Wing Commander... For, nah. In classified information, we have a code from Starfleet Academy on how to unlock the USS Excelsior. We have another NES game compilation on the Super Nintendo this issue with Ninja Gaiden Trilogy, which connects collects all three Ninja Gaiden games as far as the NES ones. Um, no graphical overhauls here like there was with the Super Mario All-Stars collection. and Or, for that matter, the Dragon Quest remakes on the uh, Super Nintendo or Super Famicom, rather, in Japan. And additionally, there are some gameplay balance tweaks for this game is that in some cases make them more punishing than the NES version, though in others they do restore some functionality from any from the Famicom version of these games, like the ability to for uh, Ryu to crawl up walls while moving. Also, 
The article gives notes for each actor of the game, but they sadly go to the next step, which is also mention which back issues of Nintendo Power you could go to to get walkthroughs of these games. Now, some of these issues are certainly no longer available, but there's probably more than a few people who have an expansive collection of the magazine at this point. So, it's not, it would not be unreasonable to have the information in there. Those issues, by the way, would be issue number 5 of Nintendo Power, the second strategy guide issue, and issue number 27. Um, all of which I previously covered on the show, and, well, obviously, I'll have links to those on in the show notes. Getting back to Game Boy ports of Super Nintendo games, we have a port of Judge Dredd for the Game Boy that doesn't seem to change too much about the game itself. Well, yes and no on the changes. Judge Dredd for the Game Boy almost works as well as the Super Nintendo version of the game with a few issues. Enemies are more bullet spongy, unless, and unless you close and do melee damage, they're also less inclined to surrender. The level designers of the game did redesign the level layouts to fit the limitations of the Game Boy screen, but that said, the field of view is still more limited than the Super Nintendo version, which makes navigation difficult. And on top of all of that, the music feels a lot more monotonous. That said, the Game Boy version does make it easier to shoot on the diagonals than the Super Nintendo version does, so that's a point in the game's favor. In Counselor's Corner, we get even more tips for Ogre Battle. We have several classic arcade ports for the Game Boy this issue, all of which we previously covered. Missile Command, Asteroids, and Centipede. Um which have been covered in episodes 47, 45, and 54, one of those being at least, probably two of those being at best of the rest episodes. So, I'm skipping those. Finally, we have a Game Boy version of Earthworm Jim with general notes on the game. Earthworm Jim GB does a lot of things right, and just as much stuff wrong. The animation of the characters feels fluid, sprites are scaled well up the screen, but it also feels like the game is trying to replicate the levels of the Super Nintendo game one for one, just shrunk down a bit, which causes problems because it doesn't have the level of detail that you got from a uh, cartridge on a console, and because that things fall, kind of fall apart. Environmental hazards are harder to spot, you take damage more quickly, and platforms become much more difficult to navigate. Now, it's interesting seeing this port and Judge Dredd cover to the same issue. Dredd recognized that you don't have to retool your sprites, you have to rethink your level environments as well. Rather, I should say, you don't just have to retool your sprites. You do have to, but you also have to think your, rethink your level environments and how they work on the Game Boy screen on top of that. Even if, in the other game, you are doing the same things on those levels. Earthworm Jim doesn't rethink your level environments, and thus, that is to the game's detriment. Now, in the Now Playing column, this issue, for a first time, we have no also-rans. Um, we have our full Virtual Boy lineup, which we already talked about and we're skipping over, and then the games which are covered in this is issue on top of that. And in Pack Watch, we have two upcoming featured fighting games, the Power Rangers fighting game and Primal Rage. So, my, big, my main ish pick of the issue is Chrono Trigger. It just means it's, a, it's a legend and a classic for a reason. That said, I also recommend picking up a version of the game on any later console. DS version, um, digital download, PlayStation 1, something like that, as opposed to a physical cartridge, because, again, a loose cartridge is going to cost you about 100 bucks. never mind getting the in box. If you got the money to spend, that's great. If you're going for completionism, that's great too. But it's not a requisite. It, it, it's not something that's like, okay, you have to, you, you can only really experience it on a physical cartridge in this case. Otherwise, on the RPG front, Secret of the Stars isn't a bad choice either. Again, loose, it's a little pricey. Like, well, at the time of this recording, it's about 30 ish bucks, which is kind of, which is up there, but it's not like way up there. And it's, an, it's a fine, enjoyable game, honestly. Next issue, it's time for Killer Instinct.
thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. Yeah.